Hey, it's Benny. Let's make a board game. Episode number five. So I was talking to my daughter Ainsley. You guys see Ainsley's name. Actually, her name and Tavi's name are on the current uh, Kickstarter we're running for Mermaids vs. Kraken, which means that Roll and Write Revolution is sponsoring this video. Thank you, Roll and Write Revolution, for sponsoring our videos. Uh, so she had this idea that she told me about, and she said, hey, you should make a game where there's teams, and there's a night team and a day team. And um, she decided that her and Mommy were on the day team and that, that uh, Tavi and I were on the night team, or maybe it was the reverse. Anyway, so that inspired a different idea that I had um, that I want to put together and then show her because I think she'll think it's really cool. And I wanted to film the process for you guys because this was really fun to do with the Ski Patrol game idea, which I still have a really good idea about what I want to do with it. Um, I think I talked in the last video about how I was probably done with it for right now. Um, and that's fair because I'm going to design some uh, cards that are the um, that are the people you save, basically. Um, and make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more about the St. Bernards because I think they're really cool. Anyhow, so that's, that's that game idea. So this new game idea that Ainsley inspired uh, is called the Night Zoo. So we'll get our little handy dandy the night zoo um, I thought it'd be really cool to do a game about uh, nocturnal animals and so this page over here is going to be our cards All right, nocturnal animal cards but I want to do something a little bit different with this game than I've done in the past um, you know I want it to be like I've, I've thought about this idea a little while if you guys can tell this isn't nice as as blatantly fresh an idea. I, though I have not put pen to paper, it's the first time I've put pen to paper on this idea um, from the Night Zoo. So I was thinking about it would be cool to have an animal or a shape, right, to add to your zoo. So if maybe this is a, a raccoon, right, and raccoons have kind of the, they have a little nose that comes down, right, like that. And that's a mask. Uh, do you have to be a great artist to design board games? The answer is absolutely not. You just have to be passionate enough to get after it. Right? And they have this little ring tail that goes like, you know, rings. You guys know how raccoons look, probably. Maybe. They look a little bit like red foxes, or red, red pandas, but not quite. Um, and I also think that you would have shapes, right, that you could add to your enclosure. Um, you know, something like that. Tetris pieces, you know. Tetrominoes. Whatever you want to call them, polyominoes, for the folks that like to call them polyominoes. I just think it'd be cool to do a game, you know, kind of along those lines, right? You know, just draw a whole bunch of shapes, we, you know, whatever. We just, we just go, you know how this goes, guys. We just play along and we try to figure out something cool, right? Tetrominoes have a lot of, um, of four space shapes, which then impacts what we're doing right as far as our design um because they have to be a certain shape and certain size and all that kind of thing um so we can have some other character you know we can have like a bat right that's have a little like a kind of bat i don't know like how, how would you draw batman a little tail boop, boop. and then give him a little batty head hello mr bat there's some little eyes maybe a nose um I don't know. Like I said, this is this is really uh, the first time I'm actually putting this thing together and really trying to um, grasp conceptually what I want to do. So I think, you know, if you have 18 cards, right? So we got 18 cards. And we have a player sheet, right? That's what this thing is here that I'm taking notes on. Um, these will be cards, you know, we'll, we'll flesh that all out later. We'll get the other nocturnal animals uh, involved. We'll get a, you know, a possum. Possums are pretty cool. They have that little kind of pointy face, right? And possum. And they kind of have like, uh, I think they have kind of roundish ears. I don't know, little, little, little ears like that. And they have this big fluffy body and these little legs. And they have a little tail. Hello, friend. I'd like to go through your trash, please. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is how we design games, right? 
So one of the things we have to keep in mind if we're doing if we're doing um, polyomino shapes or tetromino shapes, they are um, typically there are four there's four pieces that become you know the um, that you have to use right, and so you have to be sort of mindful about that. I'm drawing on the the side of the thing here, so there's like there's like key shapes that are tetrominoes. Anyway, um, I think there's like six or seven. It's fine. Um, so we have to do keep in mind though that there are four right. There's four um, spaces that they take up, and so if we do that. So this is where, like when I design games, I think about math. So if 18 cards, you're probably not going to use all 18 of them to fill in animal enclosures in your zoo, right? So, but you might use, I don't know, you might use, uh, you might use a bunch, I don't know, 10, maybe, 9? Nine times four is 36, right? But that gets weird because these are different shapes. Um, so if you figure, you know, if you do a, a, a zoo and the zoo is this kind of big grid, right? And um, this is kind of where I stumbled in with art detectives. We, we talked about that, like, you know, in the first video, um, I was talking about art detectives and I thought it was a cool idea. And um, in gameplay, it didn't actually work. So I'm actually going to redesign that completely and it'll, who knows, it'll be something else. I don't know. You know, no, the thing with games and game design is, is you guys will have lots of ideas and you'll have lots of games, hopefully, you know, and I do. I'm, I'm I go, not unique in that way. There's a lot of folks that have lots of game ideas and lots of games. Um, our friend uh, Devin, Devin Metlin, right, with uh, Board Game Hype. Lots of game ideas and lots of games that he's working on. Uh, Chris Baki, right, another friend of ours, um, he does a lot of different game ideas, and, um, yeah, so there's, I mean, there's a lot of design, Martin Wallace, you know, all the, the big boys, Eric Lang, you know, they all have lots of ideas, um, Phil Walker-Harding, you know, they, tons of ideas, um, currently drinking a Starbucks beverage, hey, Starbucks, would you love to sponsor this video? Because I sure do like your drinks. Um, yeah, right. They're not going to sponsor me. Anyway, back to the game. So, 18 cards. And the thing I wanted to kind of parse was when the card's revealed, you can use it as an animal or you can use it as an enclosure in your zoo. Um, so I think that's where, like, you have to figure out, you know, how much of the zoo the animals can use, how much they can't use. We could always do these guys as letters, right? Like B is for bat, right? R is for raccoon. O is for possum, because opossum. Um, you know, whatever. Um, we could have an armadillo, because they have those in Texas. A is for armadillo. And they kind of look like possums with armor. They're pretty cool. I think you guys would think they're interesting. They have kind of like, like they look kind of like that, right? Like, uh, but they have like bands, right? Because they roll up into a ball. Pretty cool. Um, things like that. Um, so we can make it easy on ourselves that way. Um, you know, of course, we need to think about in terms of, you know, if we're going to use 18 cards, how many go to the zoo, how many go to the animals. Um, and if you place an animal, how many animals do you place? Does it fill the enclosure? How big can the enclosure be, right? And so I think maybe you start with, start with enclosure, enclosure space. I think this, you know, we could do, uh, you, you guys know me, I like to do one to a hundred players, but I think I'd like to do one to 18 players zookeepers whatever you want to call them zookeepers i just i really like the title the night zoo um i think it's a very clever title i think it's cool i don't know why i came up with it other than she was talking about nighttime and i thought that's pretty neat and then we talked about nighttime animals and she's like hey what about raccoons and bats and i don't know she listed off a couple so we talked about those and how they come out at night and some animals come out during the day and you have 
I think they're a dying neural, and then there's some that are do both, and that's pretty cool too. Um, so that's where I'm at with this idea and this thought. And this is probably a rambly video, and I'm sorry. Um, trying to work through this process, and I figured I'd share with you guys while I was working with it. Um, so you start with enclosure space, so you reveal, or uh, we, each player gets a card to start their zoo. That's why it's 1 to 18, so you can give everybody one card. So they may have a different thing, and they start wherever they feel like starting. They have to start on a corner, I don't know. But I think if you use, if you plan for, say, half of them to be used for animals and the other half used for, um, the other half used for placement or to, to build enclosures, um, I think, you know, you have to do, so you have to do uh, paths, right? Paths, paths are important. So if you create like a path, you know, break up the enclosures. Um, you want people to be able to see stuff, right? So, you know, maybe, uh, so we say max of eight spaces per enclosure, right? Paths on both sides, paths on both sides, right? And then we can have maybe some, I don't know, some bonuses or something. Um, so we have maybe about animals on board, right? Animals on the board. So it's like, this is an animal. This is an armadillo. This is a raccoon. This is a, a possum. This is a bat, right? So on and so forth. Um, and those are scoring. Scoring if in closed with like animal. So that's kind of a cool idea. Um, it might it might get weird with with the shapes, but I think it might be interesting, honestly. Um, so I think let's see. We talked about you know if they. I mean, if they go wild with, with filling in spaces, they're gonna have to fill in paths too. Um, do you use the shapes as paths? Do you have triple use cards where one, it can act as a path for, I don't know, six spaces? Or paths and enclosures of the same shape? That might work. Ooh, that would work, okay. And then, um, you know, you'd have to figure out your animals, where you want your animals to be, but you start with a, an enclosure. You wouldn't necessarily have to have a path. I guess you wouldn't need a max spaces for enclosure. Let's get rid of that. That seems silly. Okay. Sorry, I'm starting to play test this in my head. Anyway. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with this one. Um, I'm going to think some more on it. And you guys will get a part two. And thank you so much for checking out Let's Make a Board Game. Um, Roll and Write Revolution presents. Uh, Mermaids vs. Kraken is live currently on the Kickstarter. I hope you guys will check that out. Um, it's a really fun game that my daughters helped design. Uh, came up with the, you know, the concept and playtest and all that kind of stuff. Um, they'll probably help with this one. I'm going to show this one to them tonight. And they'll probably have lots of ideas. And, oh yeah, it needs this. And it needs a unicorn. And it needs a whatever um and so that'd be cool um it's one of the things i really i love sharing with them is is games and they they seem to like it pretty well too and they get creative and it's fun um yeah so thank you for checking it out hope you guys have a wonderful day uh enjoy the rest of your wednesday or whenever you guys happen to see this video because this will be out on wednesday thanks so much for checking us out